Twitter, then blogs, all these things. Let's talk a little bit about what those things are. <clears throat> Facebook. Um, some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. It's important to understand what it is. They call it a social networking site. It is a way that people can communicate with other people. There are approximately 400 million subscribers to Facebook right now. It's growing by about 100,000 people a day. Everybody in the world is signing up to Facebook. What does it do? I go to Facebook, I can create what's called a profile of myself. And I can put my picture, well, there's a lot of pictures, but I can put one picture for like who I am. I can put my name, and I can put all sorts of information about myself. Anything I want. The children who are using Facebook, and adults, will put their where they live, their address, their phone number, their cell phone number, what school they go to, everything about themselves, every favorite uh, uh, um, hobby. They'll talk about every masha of their lives. And then, once you have this profile, you can search for other people by name, by school, by all kinds of different search criteria. And you can build a network of all of these friends. And as I go around the world speaking to our children, I ask them, how many friends do you have in your Facebook account? And I hear 500, 1,000, 2,000. One boy raised his hand and said, 5,000. He was proud of 5,000. I said, 5,000? Why not 6,000? He says, because 5,000 is all they'll let you have. He says, but don't worry, I have a second account with 2,000 in that one. And he was, this was a 14-year-old boy. I travel all over the world. I'm sure some of you do too. I know people in Australia and in England and in Switzerland and in South Africa. and I know people all over the world. I don't think I have a hundred friends. Maybe I don't have any friends, but I don't think I have a hundred friends that are really like that. But our children don't understand that. And they will take what they call a friend, and their friend will say, well, you got to meet my friend. And then that friend says, you got to meet my friend. And before you know it, they've got huge amounts of strangers that they are calling friends. <coughs> and the children will tell you, oh, but I know everybody there. They're all either cousins or some relative, or friends from school, or friends from camp. I know everybody there. It's not shy. It's just simply not shy that they know all those people. And they expose themselves because anybody can search for anybody. Here is a, a point to make that uh, uh, understandable. I was asked to speak in a, another town with a nice Jewish community. And in this particular community, um, before I was given the, the reshus to speak to the, to the community at large, I had to speak to a, a group of, a, a vat of that town. And I knew that they were a bit skeptical about someone who looks like me coming in and talking to people who look more like you. Not that it's uh, different in my opinion. I think, you know, maybe I'm justifying myself that a Shomotar Mitzvah is a Shomotar Mitzvah. But they wanted me to pass through their uh, clearance, which was fine. With me. No problem with that. But I figured in order for me to really make my point, that I had to find something that would really get their attention. So I went online and I did some searches using typical Jewish children's names and um, and and that town. So I put in uh, Shlaimi or uh, Devora or whatever in that town, and I came up with a few profiles. One of them I happened to open up in Mokat, 
And this particular young girl put her name, her address, her cell phone number, what school she goes to. She had a whole school schedule, every class, what time it was. And then she had some places where she could write things. She had a profile of every detail of every mashahu of her life. 19 pages long, this profile. Her hair color, her eye color, every, every mashahu. But then, further into it, she started to, you can write whatever you want, and she started to speak about her parents and about how much she disliked them and how terrible they were and how they treated her badly and she used such little pain that it, it, I, I always say she would, a sailor would have been embarrassed and I couldn't believe it. So what I did was I went and printed it out, made a few copies and I blacked out anything that identified exactly who she was, because it's not my job to report her to anybody. And I gave this out to these Rabbanim to read through, to say this is an example of what goes on here in this town. This isn't uh, across the ocean in, in England, or in Israel, or in Brazil, or wherever. This is right here in, in your town. I gave them a couple of minutes to flip through it and read it and understand what they were looking at. And then I said to them, Rabbi Sion, one of you is holding your daughter's profile. This can happen to anybody. Don't, please, don't fall into the trap of saying, Nishmanki. Anybody is, is susceptible. The Dayan said that we live in a new world and, and that in that new world we can go anywhere we want. You can, it's not just going to Manhattan, you can go anywhere. And on the internet you can really go anywhere because the internet is the same but without any sort of borders or barriers. There's nothing holding us back from going wherever we want to go or wherever someone wants to go. And, and that's, a, that, that's scary. Because anybody can do anything in any moment. And we, 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 we expose ourselves to any and everything that can change us in one second. You may have a concrete, steel reinforced dome over your house that there's no way that. There's no chance that, that, that any of the of the schmutz or the or the tuma that, that's out there in the world can get in. But your child can walk right through the front door of that bunker to your next door neighbor, who maybe isn't as uh, strict as you are, and get hold of everything. Or maybe they don't even go to a neighbor. Maybe they go to the library. I, I have a boy that comes to me in, uh, for counseling. Um, he didn't go to the neighbor. He didn't go to the library. He found out that he could stop at the dry cleaner and pay him a dollar an hour. And the dry cleaner says, go on the internet and do whatever you want. So he goes and sits there. His father thinks that uh, he's in yeshiva. And he sits there and he gets himself in trouble. And, and he's not happy about it. The most important thing I can tell you is, though, don't go home with the words that I'm saying tonight and tell your children, this is what you have to do, if you yourselves are not going to follow the same rule. Don't expect them to follow your rules if you're not going to follow your own rules. And if you think that, well, they're not going to know, that, uh, they're just kids, they're very smart. They see what's going on, they know what's going on, and they're going to see through you if you're not being the same as what you tell them to be. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the assault, that's the assault. So, 